Welcome back guys. I am super excited about this functionality. I actually wasn't even sure I would be able to get it to work. In fact, there were so many sources that said it was impossible given our constraints. But as you can see, if I go into Scruffy and change him to a poo poo and change his age to 202 and save the changes, it makes it through to the back end just fine. Now this is huge. Now anyone, anyone, whether they have an internal user account or not, can edit information for you. It's not quite as friendly as setting up a form in Studio, but it is still something you can do. So let's get into it. So let's go into sales and we can really go in from anywhere. Go into Studio. We're gonna go to model pages and we're gonna get rid of our filter and we're going to get to our dog's model page. Go ahead and click on the record view because that's where we're editing records, okay? And there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that you probably don't necessarily recognize. There actually is some JavaScript, which is what we needed to be able to submit the record, but it should be just clear enough to where you can edit this and make it work for your own purposes. So I'm gonna walk you down through the code. There's a lot going on here, and honestly, I don't 100% understand everything here, but I do know how to adjust it. And I did make sure that I got it so that certain field types did work so that you can see how they work and you can use this for yourself. So the big thing that sets us up here properly is having a form so that we can receive information. Inside of that form, we have some divs that set up our fields. So first we have a label for name, then we come in and we say, okay, here's the name of this text type input, um, it's x underscore name, and the value that we're setting in here at first is the record x underscore name, so it starts with the correct value for us. So this is a very simple text control. If we pop over to our website, in our test account, you can see that's represented with the label here, and then the field for input right here with the existing value right here as well. So this next field is a little bit difficult because it's a many to one and we have to use a selection input here. Even with Odoo's own forms, generally the selections are explicitly stated, at least by Odoo. Whereas if we come back in and look at my code right now, what happens is we're looping through all of the dog breeds, okay? And then we're setting the value that's selected to the current breed that's on the record here. This works very, very well. The only problem is when we come in and we're going to pass this in to our JavaScript is it was putting it in as a text field, which causes us problems. So this line 66 right here goes ahead and forces it to be an integer. That's a key piece and it won't work if you don't have this piece right here, this 66. So for many to ones, to get all the values right here, and you can filter them down more if you want with the search, but to get all the values for that many to one so that we have those for our users to select, we need to set it up just like this. And I say just like this, we wanna get our model name in here, okay? That's the only thing that we need to change for, and this is for the many to one model, the model that we're related to, okay? Then we're setting a variable called breed, Okay, and we're setting the value of each selection to the breed ID for that selection. Okay, um, and then we're bringing in as what's showing on the drop down the name. So this is kind of cool too because we can actually do whatever value we want for the drop down here. It's not limited like it is in the back end of Odoo. Kind of cool. So looking back over here, I have another text input field. This is just for the age. Nothing special here, don't, don't need to really change anything. And then, and this one was pretty tricky on its own, we have the current picture, and then we have the option to upload a new picture here. You can do this with other files as well. So this one's a bit tricky, you need to step through it slowly, but basically in this first section, we're showing the existing image, okay? And then in this next div, we're allowing them to upload a new picture using a form control of a file and we're naming this X avatar image so we can reference it down here in the JavaScript below. So the key piece to this is we're looking at it and saying, if we have a file for this, okay, we are going to send the dog ID to update so that we can update it down here. Okay, otherwise we're gonna send null and that way it doesn't get updated. Okay, so that's the form and collecting all of it, but how does the data actually get into Odoo? Well, it very much relies on this function send data, okay? 
And really, I wouldn't change anything else in here. Please don't. Well, there's one other thing I changed. But anyway, I wouldn't change anything else in here. The only other thing that you need to change is you need to change what gets passed in to Odoo for this record. So X name, this is the field name on the record, okay, is going to be set up as, well, all this interesting information here. X Studio Breed is going to be from Breed ID, which again comes from our little variable right here, okay? X Studio Age is going to come through and it's going to pull the input called X Studio Age, which again, very important to get these input names correct. Otherwise, it's not going to feed in properly. But you can go ahead and add additional fields here. This is all very, very workable and not something that you necessarily need to be afraid of because you can test it out and see if it's working. And sorry, guys, just a few other things that you want to make sure and update down here where it's actually pushing the detail. You want to make sure the model matches the model that you're trying to push data to. OK, and you will want to make sure that the ID for the model that you're pushing through, the value of it comes through right here. So we're setting dog ID right here as a variable that comes through from up here where it initially is setting our record ID. So make sure you set all that up so it passes through properly. That's going to be important too. And the last piece is our little button here. Okay. It's going to go ahead and save all this information. So this save dog button is going to kick off the JavaScript. And at the end, what it's going to do is it's going to check if it got in properly. So if it did get in properly, it's going to say dog information updated successfully. And then it's going to redirect us to the page right here. Now you can stick a specific URL if you want, or you can look at your pages and then just do the forward slash and the page name right here, which is what I've done. Now there is one other thing that I had to do to make it so that this would work. I'm going to show you what that is just real quick. So let's go to our model here and looking at our access rights. Okay. So right now we've got user type internal user. Okay. And I've got read, write, create. I don't have delete access, so we could change that if we wanted to. But right here, I've got website integration, public model access. Now I gave this all this access. Now I probably should have done this a little bit differently. Um, you certainly could, and you could come into this and say portal user. And this is probably the correct way to do it really is to go to portal user and we're going to set this for portal user. Okay. Um, we're going to take back off the access that I granted here. Okay. And we're going to add it back right here. Okay. So that portal users can now adjust that information. So if somebody's part of that group, they can do it on the record rules. We're still good here because it filters it down to the current user and make sure that they can only see their own dogs. But I didn't go over last time, this part right here, make sure you add this or else you won't be able to have people update that information. So one more time, just because I'm so tickled by what we've done here, we're going to change Scruppy to a great Dane. And we're going to make him 1000 years old. And we're going to go ahead and save those changes. And you can see this comes through beautifully. So hopefully this has got the wheels in your head turning and you're thinking of all the different ways you could interact with people outside of your company using your new portal views. And yes, I did drop the code for this in the description below. If you want to just copy and paste it, obviously you don't want to type all that stuff out. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below or grab some time with me on my Calendly. And thank you guys. Always appreciate you stopping by. Hope to see you again soon.